continue. Uh, I have the great pleasure now of introducing Josh Bongard, who will talk about Resilient Machine. Josh Bongard is, as you know, a co-author on the book How the Body Shapes the Way We Think. And he is now a professor at the Computer Science Department at the University of Vermont, and he has a lot of experience with evolutionary designs, and he is the one who develops this model of genetic regulatory networks that will give you the ontogenetic development of these simulated creatures. Okay, without further ado, the floor is yours, Josh. We're looking forward to your presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Rolf. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we hear okay. you very well. That's great. All right, well, thank you very much, Rolf, for the uh, introduction, and thanks again for the invitation to be able to speak as part of the Shanghai lectures. Uh, I'm going to speak for about 20-25 minutes and then I'll field some questions uh, in the remaining time that we have. Uh, as Rolf mentioned, uh, while I was a PhD uh, in his lab in Zurich, uh, most of my PhD was involved in the field of evolutionary robotics, which uh, as I believe Rolf just explained, evolutionary robotics is taking an evolutionary algorithm and applying it to robotics in an attempt to try and automate the design of robots. So given some desired task, you're trying to evolve both the body plan and the neural network together to produce a robot that can perform uh, a desired task. Uh, as I believe Rolf explained in that particular work, we used genetic regulatory networks, which combines biological development with evolutionary dynamics to get uh, the robot uh, that you'd like. So I'm not going to talk about that project today, but I'm going to talk about a different evolutionary robotics project, which is the Resilient uh, Machines Project. Uh, as you'll have noticed with the block pushers and the genetic regulatory network uh, work, there we were dealing with simulated robots that were being evolved in a virtual space. Uh, one of the extensions of that work is obviously to try and translate those evolved simulated machines into physical machines. Uh, the technology for that is known as automated manufacturing or 3D printers. Uh, it's a very active area of research here in the United States uh, as well as elsewhere. Um, but again, I'm not going to talk about that particular work today. Um, so switching to slide two. Um, I'm going to be talking about this particular physical robot that you see here. So unlike in the case of the block pushers or the genetic regulatory network, we're starting with the hand-designed physical robot that you see here. So if you could start video 2-1, please. Can everybody see the video? Ah, okay. So you'll note here, uh, what we do is we have a physical robot that's actually running its own evolutionary algorithm and uses that evolutionary algorithm to search the space of possible locomotion strategies or gates. And you can see this is from a typical experiment. This is one of the evolved gates that our autonomous robot uh, discovers. That's an active area of research in evolutionary robotics but in the work I'm going to talk about today, we took that work one step further um, where we wanted our robot to adapt to changes in its environment or even changes to its own body. So as I'm sure you've heard many times throughout uh, the course of these lectures, adaptation is one of the main uh, guiding factors of intelligent agents. I tend to distinguish between two different kinds of adaptation. You have robustness and resiliency. So robustness is uh, a mild form of adaptation where we have the robot or the human or the animal constantly adapting or slightly changing its mode of operation in the face of environmental change. So for example, our robot might have uh, some sensor noise or motor noise. The robot may move from carpet to hardwood floors uh, where it has to slightly change that locomotion pattern that you just saw. So that's robustness. What we're going to focus on in this project that I'm going to show you is a deeper form of adaptation, which is known as resiliency. So resiliency is something that humans are very good at, animals are very good at, but machines are not yet very good at. 
Resiliency is the idea of realizing that the environment has changed so drastically or so much that your current mode of operations is no longer appropriate and you switch to a completely different gait or a completely different way uh, of moving. So in the case of our resilient machine, if you can now play video 2-2 please, you'll notice that we introduce an environmental change to the robot which is to physically damage the machine.